Hello everyone, Jedidah10 aka Jed from snowme.com here and today we're going to be talking about cork spins versus regular spins. So it's important to know the difference between a cork spin which is an off axis slash inverted rotation versus a regular flat spin because how you do them is differently and they can really affect your learning if you get them mixed up and don't understand the differences in how you do them. So I'm going to explain the exact differences between a cork spin and a regular spin and also show you point of view footage from me doing both a regular spin and a cork spin side by side. So let's get into this. Okay, so first things first, this is what a cork spin looks like from a third person perspective. And now this is what it looks like from my perspective. So as you can see, a cork spin is basically just a normal spin except you're not spinning completely flat. You're going a little bit inverted or a little bit off axis in your rotation. And it's just a cool way to style out a trick and do a trick a little bit differently. But why I'm explaining this is I know it's an advanced trick and most people aren't going to be learning cork spins. But I'm explaining this because it's important to know how to keep a spin, a regular spin, and how to throw a cork spin because they're two similar spin initiations except it's on how you throw your shoulder and a lot of people fall into this problem where they accidentally cork the trick without knowing it and that makes it harder for them to learn tricks and just complicates the whole process of learning spins. So you want to be able to do a regular spin and a cork spin as separate techniques and know when you're doing them. You don't want to accidentally do one or the other. So what I've done here is I've done a regular 540 and a cork 540 both from my perspective and put them next to each other. So I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like and I'm going to slow it down and show you where I'm throwing my shoulder. Okay, so this being a cork backside 540, I'm going to throw my lead shoulder into my back leg downwards. So here you can see I'm going to freeze it and you can see in a regular 540, I'm centered around the middle of my board still. But in a cork 540, my vision is centered looking towards my back foot because that's where I'm throwing my shoulder. So that's why it's so important when you're spinning a regular spin to try to keep those shoulders straight and not dip them accidentally because that's going to send you into that unnecessary cork. Okay, so let's continue with the rotation now. Now I'm going to freeze the frame right here again because this is where the landing is coming into view for this cork trick. And watch my head track the landing to adjust my body on the cork 540. But notice on the regular 540, I don't have to do that because I'm already spinning flat. So that's a big difference between cork tricks and regular tricks. With cork tricks, spotting that landing is super crucial to make sure you're lined up in line with the landing as you come out of that inverted spin. Okay, so that's basically the difference between a cork spin and a regular spin. Now the main thing to remember here is keep your shoulders flat. You don't wanna dip them by accident. If you start corking a bit, it's going to send your rotation off. It's not so bad on a 180 or 360, but if you start corking and you start spinning bigger spins, it's going to affect you later. You're going to start spinning 540s and 720s and find out that you're not landing them correctly because you're accidentally going into a bit of a cork and that's making it really hard to square up with the landing. So remember to keep your shoulders flat when you spin, work on getting those flat spins mastered first and then later you can start introducing the corks and watch for accidental corks because they are pretty common, especially with backside spins. I find a lot of people tend to accidentally cork their backside spins by accident and obviously you don't want to do that. So work on keeping those shoulders straight and spinning a nice flat spin. So one more thing before you go, here's my free snowboard gear guide that I created for my readers at snowme.com. It will teach you how to pick the perfect snowboard setup that's right for you. So it will take you through sizing your snowboard, which snowboard's best for you, what bindings should you choose, how to choose boots that won't make your feet hurt, how to choose the right helmet, and a whole lot more. So if you want this free guide, here's your chance to grab it. 